podcasting's choice from coast to coast, continent to continent, right here 24 7. This podcast is a proud member of the Lamb Podcasting Network. Find the network at largeassmovieblogs.com. Cinematic Universe. This is Subject Cinema's Avengers Endgame MCU Countdown. Did you ever think you would see a Marvel movie nominated for Best Picture? I hoped I would. Yeah, but did you think it would actually happen? Um, not really. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. And then I saw this movie and I went, if this movie doesn't get nominated yeah. for an Academy Award, I'm going to scream. <clears throat> Welcome to Marvel, uh, to, uh, no, not Marvel, Subject Cinema's Avengers Endgame MCU Countdown. I'm T.C. Kirkham. Hi, I'm Kim Brown. It is Tuesday, uh, April 23rd, uh, 2019. We are just three days away from the launch of Endgame, which is probably going to be the biggest opening film in the history of movies. Mm-hmm. And, um, wow, we've got a great movie to talk about today. We really do. 2018's Black Panther. This was the final film before Avengers Infinity War, which we'll get to tomorrow. Setting a lot of that up. Panther first made its appearance, like Spider-Man, in Captain America Civil War. Yep. And Chadwick Boseman as... Uh, King T'Challa is just phenomenal. He really is. I mean, he has it down pat. Mm-hmm. Um, Little interesting history about the character of Black Panther, which they changed quite a bit for the movie. The, by the way, they when the character of Black the Black Panther first debuted in Marvel Comics, uh, the the civil rights group, the Black Panthers, was not in existence. Right. And then the group came into existence and Marvel Comics went, uh, okay, we, we should probably try and do something about this. And they actually changed the name of the character to the Black Leopard. Mm-hmm. And then people went, no, we like it the other way, change it back. Right. And Marvel did. Yeah. And the rest is history, yeah. as they say. As um, they say. As they say. This is the 17th movie? Right? Uh, I think it's the 18th. 18th, 18th movie yeah. in the Marvel Cinematic Universe up to this point. Mm-hmm. It is film six in phase three. Most of the phases have only gone six films. This yep. one actually went six plus three after. Uh, and uh, two after. And uh, so it's going to be interesting. Um, this is how you do a superhero movie for the masses and you don't need to see any of the other films Ahead of time. No. Um, it was easy to go into Black Panther and know that it was going to be a fun movie. Even if you hadn't seen any of the other Marvel Cinematic Universe, you might have come a little bit confused in a couple of places, but not really anything big. Well, it would have been super helpful to see Civil War because yes. you would have seen the death of T'Challa's father, King T'Chaka, right. which set up him becoming... The king of Wakanda and becoming mm-hmm. the Black Panther because the Black Panther is the protector of the people of Wakanda. This is a good example of a movie that perfectly balances action and humor. Mm-hmm. There's not too much humor like in Thor Ragnarok. There's not too much slapstick like in Thor Ragnarok. Um, and I, there are some truly breathtaking action scenes. There are, yeah. Um, some crazy stuff. Battle rhinos. There are battle rhinos in this movie. Holy cow. I mean, yikes. No, rhino. Holy rhino just sounds terrible. <laughs> could it's be the- worse. Could be cows on fire. 12 Thir- assassins. 13, 13 assass- assassins. Joke 13 anyway. assassins. You have to go watch it to believe it. So. But the thing is, there's so much in this film that is beyond a superhero film. You know, it, it is a film. I mean, and people can be like, oh, why'd they have to bring blah, blah, blah into it? Because blah, blah, blah exists. Yeah. You know, it's like, but they don't, it's not done in a way that makes you feel like you're being smashed in the face No, with it. it doesn't. You know. It's not. It is a movie set, for the most part, in Africa. 
It is a movie about people from Africa. But you know what? It's a movie for everybody. It has. It absolutely is. An amazing cast that included Chad- Chadwick Boseman, as I mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, Michael B. Jordan, Angela Bassett, Letitia Wright, G- Denai Garay. Who played the tall guy, the big guy? I've forgotten. Um, um, Umbaku. Um, yeah, Umbaku. Who played him? I totally forgot. I know it because he's in something else I, right now. No, I, I feel terrible because I follow him on Twitter, so I feel really bad about <laughs> him. And uh, there is a lone Caucasian representative in Martin Freeman. Um, and, and, um, no, sir. Huh? He's not the only one. Well, no, but he's, he's the, the only, only one that's in a major role. He's the There's only a good couple guy. That are in. Um, oh, well, yeah. Andy Serkis is back as... Uh, uh, Winston Scumbag. Duke. Yeah, that's as right. Winston Duke. I love him. And and there's so many great little appearances by other people from the universe. Mm-hmm. And uh this really and I've I've liked Chadwick Boseman and everything I've seen him in, but Letitia Wright really stood out here. We really we she ended up on our Rising Stars list last mm-hmm. year and really uh it was amazing. An amazing yeah. film. And, so and uh somebody you brought up uh-huh. already once, but I want to bring her yeah. up again because yeah. she is just amazing. Mm-hmm. Um the the young woman that plays the the head of the guard, yep. um, she um, is it Denai or Denny? I think it's Denai. Denai. Uh, Denai Guerrera. Guerrera. Oh, Guerrera, who plays Okoye, uh, who is the head of the royal guard, which is an all female guard mm-hmm. that is sworn to protect the king. Whoever the king is, that right. is a big flat point. Yeah. Uh, for for those people who think, oh, she only does that in The Walking Dead because blah, 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 blah. No, she doesn't. She shows <laughs> in this movie that she can kick butt on the big screen yep. and the small screen she can. and look amazing. If you haven't seen it, you it. need to see it before yeah. we see anything else because it is terrific. Let's flash back to subject cinema number 518, February 18, 2018, and our review of Marvel's Black Panther. I have seen gods fly. I've seen men build weapons that I couldn't even imagine. Uh huh. I've seen aliens drop from the sky. Yeah. But I have never seen anything like this. How much more are you hiding? Hold up. Let's go, go, go. Uh, we are home. Okay, it's the latest anticipated blockbuster from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Mm-hmm. Let's get right into it. Chadwick Boseman leading the cast in Black Panther. Give us the rundown. Okay. The beginning of Black Panther tells the story of the country of Wakanda in Africa. Many centuries ago, there were five African tribes that were constantly in war. And one of the things they were in war over was a meteorite that fell from the sky that they felt contained some kind of great magic. Um, turned out the meteor was this, in, this giant source of vibranium, one of the hardest metals known to man. The plants were the plants and the environment were affected by this meteor falling to earth and one thing that was created was a heart shaped herb that anyone who drinks the potion made from this herb gains incredible superhuman you know uh, powers strength and speed endurance all kinds of cool things like that. The first person to drink this became the Black Panther, the warrior priest king of their tribe, which united all of the tribes of Wakanda except for one, the Jabari tribe. Um, the Jabari tribe decided not to join with the other tribes to form the nation of Wakanda and went off to live by themselves in the mountains in seclusion. Wakanda, because of the fact that the people had this store of vibranium, became very technologically advanced far before anybody else in the world. Far more advanced. But the problem is the people of Wakanda looked at the other nations of the world, especially looking at how people of African descent and people actually from Africa themselves were being treated by the Europeans, which you can read as terribly, 
and they retreated into their own country, allowing the rest of the world to think that Wakanda is actually a poor third world nation, when in fact the real Wakanda, which cannot be seen because of their technology, is very well off and you know has all these great scientific advancement and is ruled over the family, the royal family, of which the king is still the Black Panther. Um, we see 1992 when the king at the time, King T'Chaka, goes to Oakland, California to <coughs> visit with a man that is actually, it turns out that it's his brother, Njobu. Um, Njobu has been dealing with a man named uh, Ulysses Claw, which some of us already know from Avengers Age of Ultron, um, who had stolen some vibranium and had killed people try in trying to escape. As it turns out, um, Nujobu is working with Claw. Nujobu has decided um, that you know people all over the world can use Wakandan science to rise up and throw overthrow their own governments. T'Chaka's not having any of that, and it ends poorly, to say the least. Uh, in 2016, the whole debacle that happened in Captain America's Civil War occurred with the death of King T'Chaka at, at the, the uh, doings of, the, of Helmet Zero, trying to bring about the destruction of the Avengers for what happened in his country of Sokovia. The death of T'Chaka brings to the forefront um, his son T'Challa, who now must become king and must take on the mantle of the Black Panther. This is not the easiest transition in the world. Um, although most of the people of Wakanda are happy to have him as king because they think he will be a good king and a good Black Panther, um, including his mother, Ramonda, and his younger sister, Shuri, who is a technological genius, there are certain people that aren't particularly crazy about the idea of T'Challa becoming king, specifically the leader of the Jabari tribe, a rather large, imposing gentleman by the name of Mubaku, who challenges T'Challa in a ritual ceremony where all of the tribes come together and they all have to say, we're not going to challenge the king for the right of being king. And all the other tribes say, we're not challenging. And here comes M'Baku saying, nope, I am. And we get a really vicious physical fight between T'Challa and M'Baku, which ends with M'Baku surrendering and T'Challa showing mercy because technically T'Challa could, he could have killed M'Baku. He, that was his right at the end of that battle, but he he uh, spares Umbaku's life, which comes back later in the film, as do other things from the past, including a, a young man, an extremely angry young man, um, by the name of Eric Killmonger, who has ties to the royal family that he feels in, that entitles him to the throne of Wakanda and the fate of Wakanda's people and Wakanda's vibranium. And it's up to T'Challa to put things right. With Chadwick Boseman as King T'Challa, alias the Black Panther, Michael B. Jordan as Eric Stevens, a.k.a. Killmonger, Lupita Nyong'o as Nakia, Denai Gurria as Okoye, I think her name was pronounced, Martin Freeman as CIA agent Everett Ross, Daniel Kaluuya as Wakabi, Letitia Wright as, Su as Suri, right? I think it's Shuri. 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 Uh, Winston Duke as M'Baku, Angela Bassett as Ramonda, the uh, Queen Mother, Forrest Whitaker as Zuri, a elder statesman, and Andy Serkis as Ulysses Claw, plus a few other people here and there. We've been waiting for this as the latest installment of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yep. What was your opinion? Um, I realize at this point I may sound like a slightly broken record, and if you don't know what that means, ask your parents. Um, but I, I gotta say it again. I just gotta do it. Make mine Marvel. 
Holy sugar covered crickets on a moped is this movie amazing. It was so awesome. It was powerful. It was exciting. It was fantastic. It had so much to offer and so many amazing characters that you had these strong, vibrant, powerful women that never gave up their femininity for their own power and the fact that they could kick a ridiculous amount of ass. Um, <laughs> it's a great film. It's, it's dealing with the whole idea of the, the old saying, the sins of the fathers shall be visited upon their sons. And it's really, really an amazing film dealing with a lot of deep subjects. I know that the term comic book movie, some people instantly turn up their noses at that kind of a term. But this film, just like last year's Wonder Woman, is an example of a comic book movie done absolutely right. It is so wet and it's so well cast. Absolutely everybody is incredible. Chadwick Boseman, we already knew was awesome in the part of T'Challa from Captain America Civil War. He continues to be just stellar here. Michael B. Jordan is someone we have both been huge fans of. I think the first thing we both saw him in was Chronicle. Yes. And we both were like, this guy is going to make something of himself because he's really good. And he is absolutely terrifying as as Killmonger. He really is truly scary. Uh, I think everybody else was amazing in the cast. Lupita Nyong'o, who is a wonderful actress and an incredibly beautiful lady, absolutely fantastic. Denai uh, Gurira, I, I know I'm messing your name up, ma'am, and I'm so very sorry. Um, she, it took me so long because I'm going, I know her, I know her. Oh my gosh, that's Michonne. It, 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 it took me, I was like, ah, it was driving me crazy. And then at one point she smiled and there was that beautiful smile. She has one of the loveliest smiles in cinema right now. And I was like, the, the, the penny finally dropped and I went, oh my gosh, that's Michonne. I'm like, is there From? any, huh? From? The Walking Dead. Yeah, because you got to tell people Sorry, that. sorry. <laughs> Not our audience, but anyway. No, but, uh, you know. I'm like, good grief. Is there anywhere where this woman does not kick ass? Because, I mean, she's she's this incredibly loyal, powerful woman in this film. And she's got a real, a, an almost samurai code of honor. The honor is a big part of this film. And I think it really, it's, it's so important to all of the characters and the whole film in general. I, I loved it. I thought this was such an amazing film. And someone else, I got to bring up super duper quick. I'm really sorry. Winston Duke as Umbaku. Oh my gosh. Every scene this guy is in, he picks up and walks off with it. And that's not also because he's, you know, enormous and looks incredibly strong, because he does, along with being really, really, really handsome. But he's just so charismatic. He is unbelievably charismatic. Absolutely loved him. Loved everybody in the cast. Nobody felt out of place. When this movie was over, and do I really need to say stay for the credits? Do I really need to say that? You guys are smart enough to know that, right? It's a Marvel movie. Come on. The, the second this movie was over, I was like, I want to see it again. I want to see it again right now. Um, see it. See it. See it. See it. And see it. <laughs> so now that I'm done... <laughs> I gotta, I gotta breathe. I'm out of breath. Um, what did you think? Um, I haven't cared for the last several Marvel movies. Yes. I, I was not terribly impressed with Civil War. I did not really care much for Thor Ragnarok. Guardians of the Galaxy 2 was only so-so, and I didn't like the first one of those. The last Marvel movie I really liked all the way through was Doctor Strange. Wasn't sure where this would go. Um, but the cast had me intrigued, and uh, I got to go back and, and say that uh, director Ryan Coogler has this way of making Michael B. Jordan uh, really shine. He's he's worked with him twice now, three times now, uh, starting with Fruitvale Station and then uh, Creed, mm -hmm. and now here. Um, I I I I'm. It's hard for me to put this into words because it's really, um, 
Mm. Deep breath. Uh, no, I, I know what I want to say. Okay. I'm just dragging it out for, for attention and, and oh. t- cash. Black Panther, I can give it a re- review uh, in four words. Best Marvel movie ever. Woo. Um, this movie rocks from beginning to end. Uh, Chadwick Boseman is fantastic in the role of T'Challa. We find out a lot more about him here mm-hmm. than we did in Civil War. And he is the heart and soul of the film. But And yet, he's not because the ladies in his life... Uh, Lupita Nyong'o's character, um, which is Nakia, his former girlfriend, now an undercover spy for Wakanda out in the world, uh, his incredibly brilliant and extremely sarcastic little sister Shuri, played wonderfully by Letitia Wright, and uh, the amazing Denai Gurria, Gurria, or Gurira as Okoye. Um, damn, I don't want to mess with these ladies. No. Add Angela Bassett to the mix, and you got a big, big problem. Um, She's so amazing. <coughs> Angela Bassett could read the phone book, and I would be captivated. She we, just is so regal here. It's unbelievable. We didn't really see much of Winston King's uh, M'Baku, but we will see more of him. He is part of uh, Avengers of Infinity mm-hmm. War. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm Daniel Kaluuya, who's getting all kinds of raves for Get Out. Yep. Uh, was stupendous. I'm sorry I didn't mention him. As, yeah. as Wakabi. Um, and I, I'm... Who is involved with Denai's character, and that gets awkward. Yeah, it does. And and so does his whole thing. Yeah. Because of what happens. Yep. Um, I wasn't much of a fan of Martin Freeman's uh, Everett Ross in Civil War. Here, he grows on you. Um, and like you said... It'll be funny if they can get him in a scene, one little scene in Avengers Infinity War where he's next to Doctor Strange. I will laugh. Um, Marvel, make this happen, please. He'll be like, do I know you? Um, so, what, four seasons of Sherlock together? Mm-hmm. They've had now. Uh, the score is fantastic, and, and the cinematography is unbelievable. Special effects out of the ballpark. Kugler's direction has made this one of, if not the best, comic film ever, with the exception of The Dark Knight from Christopher Nolan. And I, I'm just so blown away by it. And she really did. Before the credits even finished rolling, she was looking at me. I want to see it again. I want to see it again. Um, I do, too. I this, this is just a really awesome film. And it's non-racial. Let oh, me definitely. put it that way. I'm tired of people saying, oh, you know, Black Panther is a black movie. No. Yes, its cast is almost entirely African American or, you know, whatever. Some of them don't come from America, come from Canada or another other places. It doesn't matter if they're, uh, you know, all that same race. This is a, a multiracial it's a movie that looks movie. at multiracial problems. Yeah. There are going to be those certain people out there who are going to say, oh, it's anti-white, it's anti-America, it's anti-this, it's anti-that. No, it's not. It's just your perception. It gets very political. Yeah. It's the most political of all of the movies, except maybe The Winter Soldier. Yeah. And it's it does so without beating you over the head with no. it. To the people who are like, oh, it's anti-white, it's anti-this, you know what? Maybe that's a guilty conscience you got because if anybody... No, no, don't start down sounding like some of these people we can't stand. No, I'm just saying, okay. we both said afterwards, you know, anybody who's out there with this whole, oh, it's anti-white and all this stuff like that, if there was any part of we the world... We made a list of everything you know, we thought we'd hear, and yeah. we start, we're starting to online. Yeah. If there was any part of the world that had a reason to feel anti-white, it's that part of the world! <laughs> Let's be honest and call it what it is, folks. It is. It is. You know, but the thing is, let's try and all make things better for the next generation and the one after that and the one after that. That's just my opinion for what it's worth. So what's your score? Are you crazy? Black Panther gets an A plus from me. A plus from me, too. It's easily one of, one of if not the best movies in the Marvel Universe. The, the only one Captain that comes America close to me is, is Winter Soldier. And mm-hmm. I, I really loved 
this film. Black Panther is now playing everywhere and is setting box office records its opening weekend. Don't miss it. Go see it now and then go see it again. I cannot say enough good about this film. I adored this film. We, unfortunately, in 2018, we were hit by so many things, Mm -hmm. um, starting with some health problems, and then my mother passed away, and then we had some other issues going on throughout the year. We only got to see, what, 12 or 13 films the whole year? Something like uh, that. In the theater. Yeah. This was one of them, and we we didn't even do our Poppies and Rosies the way we did them normally. We We just picked out the best movies that we had seen, and, uh... Black Panther topped my list, and it was, I know you gave several of your mm-hmm. Just Because We Can awards to it also. Um, it is, it truly is a masterpiece and possibly the best comic film ever made until what's coming up this week. Uh, we'll see. I mean, I liked it better than I liked Infinity War. Mm-hmm. Not much, but it, it's, um, it, it's just amazing. And Chadwick Boseman is, so good. He is. He, he really is, is. He is good at the action scenes. He is good at the diplomatic scenes. He is just the perfect representative of the nation of Wakanda. Yeah, and, and it is just absolutely terrific. The thing that I think is really interesting about this film is the fact that your hero is only as good as the villain that he goes against. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can have somebody that's got all these amazing powers and stuff like that. But if the person they're going against isn't just as interesting, then it's just you watching some guy get beat up for an hour and a half, and you're like, why am I supposed to care about this? <laughs> yeah. Um, Michael B. Jordan's uh, Eric Killmonger is not a nice person. They are a person whose heart has been corrupted by hatred, but... You can understand why. Yeah. Because of the things that he's been through and the fact that life has treated him very unfairly. And the fact that life has treated him unfairly in what is supposed to be the greatest country in the world where you can make it if you really try, unless you're the wrong skin color, according to some people, um, yeah. or not the right skin color, according to some right. people, mm-hmm. whatever. You know. You know what we mean. You know what we mean, which is stupid. It is stupid. Um, anyway. He isn't the type of char- I mean, he has really terrible ideas mm-hmm. about what he wants to do. And you know that in your heart you're supposed to be like, he's the bad guy and I should really want, you know, yeah, I want Black Panther to kick his butt and all this stuff like that. But at the same time, you kind of don't. I didn't have that problem. See, I felt like there has to be something good in this person somewhere. And Nope, not that I can see. I don't agree with that. The scene at the end, after they have the big fight and everything Uh like that, that scene between the two of them, it's really beautiful. That goes more toward Mm T'Challa in in the fact that he is a very moral man and and a very upright man. But I, I felt I felt sorry for him at the end. Not over. I didn't feel overly sorry because yeah, he had some pretty terrible ideas. But at the same, it wasn't he was a, ca- a pretty terrible person. It wasn't a case of, I didn't feel like he was somebody completely irredeemable. Okay. You know, he's not a character like the Joker or Dr. Doom or right. somebody that you feel like they're a bad person all the way down to the center of okay, their heart. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. You know? I see where you're coming from. In, in, it's it's going to sound like a strange comparison, but in a way I kind of view it like um, like Magneto. I mean, if Magneto, yeah. if Magneto had grown up on a farm in Kansas instead of been, instead of having to see his family gunned down by the Nazis, he might have been a different person too. Yeah, you know, it's nice comparison to Superman, by the way. You know, uh, I'm just saying. You know, it's. Yeah. But I, I mean, I love this movie. It has action. It has humor. It has some great scenes. It has a definite character in Shuri. That little girls and not so little girls can look up to and be like, I want to be like her because she's awesome and smart. A lot of the best humor in the film comes from her too. Yeah. So that's something. Because to- she's just, she just, you can tell when she's done with somebody. She's like, just completely like, that's it. You're stupid. I'm done. Right. And, and it's just great. I want to give props to Michael B. Jordan as well because while the character, I we disagree about how the character is in some ways. Michael B. Jordan was coming off of a disaster in a superhero genre, playing uh, Johnny Storm in the disastrous Josh Trank reboot of Fantastic Four, which isn't really the Trank cut, it's a studio cut, and the Trank cut's supposed to be much better, 
But um, I'm sorry, it could be a test pattern for an hour and yeah. 45 minutes, and that would be better. And I mean, Michael um, has been one of my favorite young actors since he did Chronicle, with mm-hmm. also with Josh Schrank. And I'm I just really am of the opinion that he could not have cast this role better. Um, there is a lot to come. This directly leads into what was until what until this year uh, the biggest grossing science fiction uh, f- science fiction superhero film mm-hmm. of all time, and it could very well be eclipsed, likely to be eclipsed by Endgame. It is the first half of the story. And we find out a lot about that, and we'll talk deeply about the events in Avengers Infinity War on the next installment of this little mini-series. We are counting up to the sequel on. For Subject Cinema's Avengers Endgame uh, MCU Countdown, I'm T.C. Kirkham. I'm Kim Brown. Watch out for the snap. It's coming. Brace yourselves. This podcast is a proud member of the Lamb Podcasting Network. Find the network at largeassmovieblogs.com. Podcasting's choice from coast to coast, continent to continent, right here 24-7. The Empire.